Okay, we want to find the area of a trapezoid, yes. We are coming back and doing 5-3 later. It just fits nicely here, because we did all the areas with the Riemann sums. Okay, guys, Shh. we can take a curve, and we can approximate the area with a trapezoid instead of a rectangle. Okay, you guys, Shh. so, I guarantee, trapezoidal rule is on the exam. Last year it was on free response. You could have drawn in rectangles and triangles. As long as you came up with the same correct final answer, you were fine. Um, I didn't grade that one, but there was a lot of discussion about that. Because they did ask for trapezoids. So you're going to have to know the formula for a trapezoid. So let's just do this right now. Cole, we're going to do this area of a trapezoid. I have mine all labeled. You could put it on the back of your yellow sheet if you want to write it down. Some of you may know the formula. I mean, I know it. But I'm going to go ahead and draw in the diagonal. Maybe. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to find the area of this rectangle, uh, triangle. Okay? You could do this on the back. Yeah. There's plenty of room. So we're only going to do one problem. Just an example, and then I'm going to give you some AP problems to work at and show you which ones we're going to do. We'll get back to the quizzes today as well. So the area for this triangle is one half the base, which is B sub 2, times the height of that triangle. Right? Okay, now we're going to do this one. Now just kind of outline it here. This height is the same. So the area is one half. This base is B1. And this height is also H. And then I'm going to add them together. So the total area is one half B2 times H. I have to slide that down. plus one-half B1 times H. And can I factor anything out of that? H is what else? One-half. So the total area for a trapezoid is one-half the height. It's just like a triangle. And then I'm going to be left with B2 plus B1. Or I could have written it in a different order, B1 plus B2. And that's the area of a trapezoid. Some of you may recognize something about this and remember this formula this way. I'm going to take the H and move, switch the H into 1 half. So it's 1 half B1 plus B2. Or I could write it this way. B1 plus B2 divided by 2. What am I doing with the bases? I'm getting the average. And then the average in geometry is called a median. M, but anyway, I'm not sure about my spelling. It's the average of the basis. So it doesn't matter to me how you remember it, but you need to remember it. If you forget the formula, you just go back, draw the picture, and say, oh, yeah, that's it. Some um, explorations how you cut this triangle out and move it over here. Or make a, uh, they do that. I, I like this way better. So, because it's pretty easy. So let's do a problem. Whoops, that's not what we're doing. And I'm going to take my picture out of here, and I'm going to start it all over again. And we're going to do y equals x squared, and we're going to change it a little bit. I know that your um, problem says between 1 and 2 and 4 trapezoids. Let's find the area from 0 to 2 of x squared, and we'll do 4 trapezoids of equal height. Now on the exam, they may not all be the same height. You have to look at the table and what you're given. In this case, I'm going to actually do that. And then I want to see if you can figure out if it's an overestimate or an underestimate. So I'm going to draw that. And you're going to want to draw it. So 
So y equals x squared. And there's where we're going to go between, maybe I should make it bigger, but 0 and 2, and we're going to divide it into four trapezoids. And this is 1 half, and this is 1 and a half, right? Is that okay? <laughs> and I'm going to, I like to start with the trapezoid over on the right side because I'm looking at the left one going, that's not a trapezoid, is it? If I draw this one, is this a trapezoid? No, it's a triangle. But it's a trapezoid if you think of this, the, one of the bases being zero. We'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. So I'm going to draw on this trapezoid. And then I'm going to draw on the next trapezoid. And I'm exaggerating just a little bit. Oh, let's see. Do I have any other colors there? No. And then I'll do this trapezoid. Now, can you tell if it's an overestimate or underestimate? And it's really close. I had to exaggerate a little bit. Now, what Mrs. Herzman says, and I like her idea, is just take one trapezoid, obviously I don't want to use that corner, and draw one big trapezoid, and you'll be able to see if it's an overestimate or underestimate. Is that over or under? It's over. And it has to do with concavity. But I just show the pictures. I don't memorize that. And you might think, well, this is a really good approximation if I get lots and lots of trapezoids in there. But actually, the error is less using the midpoint rule. Because this is always going to be over. The midpoint is going to have some over, some under. It's going to balance out. So let's fi figure out the areas for each one of these little guys. Now, make sure you remember that I changed it from 0 to 2 instead of 1 to 2. And remember what this integral means. It means what? Find the area under the curve from 0 to 2. Actually, I'm always, I'm not bad about this. I should say find the signed area. Area from 0 to 2. Okay, so let's do the first one. I'll try and be good about keeping the colors the same. Okay, so this one is 1 half, because it's 1 half base times height. How big is this base? One half. And the height of this triangle is going to be the value of the function at one half, right? Now, the problem we have with the trapezoids is I'm going to pull this guy out. Okay, I'll do that one. <laughs> and this distance right here is the height. If I rotate it, you'll see that. This is the base, and this is the other base, and this length here is the height. See that? So I know what you want to say, that this is the base, but it can't be, because the bases are the two sides that are parallel. Do you remember that? From trapezoids for a long time ago. You probably haven't done trapezoids since geometry, right? Probably been that long. The bases are the parallel sides. Nope, it doesn't matter at all. I'll move this out of here. And then I'll just circle over. And how do I know which it'll be? This is concave up. That's what you would write on the exam. Okay, so let's do the blue one next. I'm going to leave that picture there. And so we're going to go to blue. And that, to me, is the hard part. But like I said, you got full points if, even if you divide it up into rectangles and a triangle. So it's 1 half. This is the height of my trapezoid. How big is the height? 1 half. Not always the same. In this case, it's always going to be the same. Then how do I find this base? This is f of 1 half. And this is the plan, by the way. And plus f of 1. Now I'm going to do the green one. I'll have to redraw it, though. Not a great picture, but anyway. Okay. Plus, it's 1 half. How big is the height here? It's still what? 
one half times f of, and now I need the, the base on this side, which is f of 1, plus the base on the other side, which is f of, well, I could write 1 and a half, but I'd really rather have 3 halves to make my arithmetic easier. You'll see. And stop me if you have any questions. All I'm doing is finding the area of this little trapezoid. This is base 1, this is base 2. The bases are the value of the function at those x coordinates. Okay, plus, you got one more to go. I got to do this last one. It's one half from the formula. What's the height of this one? One half. And then it's f of this value plus f of that value. Now that's the plan. You get a point for that. You get a point for demonstrating your trapezoidal know, rules. We don't multiply by the uh, distance between the things like we did for the other. Yes, we did. That's the one half. That's one half. So I'll pay the this is the h. This is one half. This is h right there. That's the distance between these two x coordinates. And then this is f of, or this is base one plus base two. It's the same, right? Okay, ready? What can we factor out of this thing? Hey guys, what can I factor out of this? How many one halves? I can have I have one half times a half, and each one of these terms. So I'm going to factor out one fourth, and then I'm left with. And you'll see a pattern here. Really, the first one is f of zero, but that was zero. You don't have to write it, but you won't see the pattern. Oh, I should have kept that in red. Okay, so it's this one plus, then I'm going to do this one, which is f of one half plus f of one. It's not hard, it's tedious. <laughs> it is tedious. Plus, now I have f of one from this one plus f of three halves, and then I have the black one, which is plus f of three halves plus f of two. All I am doing is making the arithmetic easier. I don't have to do this. I could evaluate everything and just add it up. Perfectly fine. You have to put the points in, though. Now, remember what f of x was? x squared. x squared. Now, do you notice anything? There's some patterns here. How many of these do I have? I get two of those. And how many of the f of ones do I have? Two. And how many f of three halves? Two. The ends are only one of them. And if you think about the geometry, it should make sense. Now, last year, some students wrote down the trapezoidal formula. You can look at that in the book if you want. But they got zero credit for it. You had to do the problem. So you don't have to know the formula. So don't even, don't even go there. <laughs> It's much easier than that. So f of x is equal to x squared. So I'm going to clean this up. It's f of 0 plus 2 times f of a half plus 2 times f of 1 plus 2 times f of 3 halves plus f of 2. I'm only doing that because I want the arithmetic to be easier. You don't have to do that. So f of 0. Now f of x is equal to x squared. So what's f of 0? Zero? 0. And this is 2 times, I'm going to substitute 1 half in, I'm going to square it. Pardon? I know, you take a little space. But I also give a, tried to give a full explanation. What's, this one is going to be 1 squared, right? Plus 2. Now I'm going to substitute 3 halves into x squared, so it's going to be 3 halves squared. And then I'm going to substitute 2 in there. Because the function's x squared. These are the x values, right? Okay, and that would be good enough. If you, get, if you do this, this is fine. You get your full points. If you, we're going to simplify it, because we're going to use our calculator in a second. But if you simplify it wrong, you will get the answer point taken back from you. Uh, one year, long time ago, a number of students did this. 
and they lose the point. Because three, you better off leaving it at three six. It's not right. It's one half. What is and uh, two years ago, BC calculus had to take the derivative of this easy function. Fifty percent got it wrong. What's the answer to this? Three, three x squared. What do you think they wrote? They did three x squared plus one. Because the stress of the exam itself will make you do ridiculous mistakes. Because you know you know that. But it's kind of silly. I'd say 50% got it wrong. I was in shock that it was that high. I expected maybe a few, but not so many. This is BC Cal. They've already had a full year of Cal. AB, okay, I could see a little bit more. but And that was easy. Now, if they wrote down the derivative of x cubed plus 1 is equal to 3x squared plus 1, they were still eligible for more points in the problem. If they just wrote down the derivative 3x squared plus 1 and didn't somehow indicate they were taking a derivative, then they, they were done. They didn't get any more points in the problem. So you always want your intention known. And it may seem silly to say, OK, I'm going to do the derivative here. I'll just write it down. Tell the reader you're going to take the derivative. And if you do the derivative wrong, you're still eligible for more points. It'd be nice to know that before you take the exam, wouldn't it? Now you know, and I'll try to remind you before the exam. OK, but we want to do this because we can. And we're going to use our Riemann program on our calculator to check our answer, too. And if you don't have that program from me, um, I'll try to get to you during out of the class. But it might be tough. OK, I can cancel out one of the twos, and I'm left with one half. That's two. You guys like to make that 9 fourths, and then you make it in, um, 18 fourths. I'm going to cancel out one of the twos, which will leave me one two here, and I'll still end up with three squared there. So that's going to be nine halves. You okay with that? Plus four. Then I'm going to add the whole numbers. Two plus four gives me six. Then I'm going to add the half numbers. Half plus nine halves is ten halves, but that's just five. I'm going to write out all the steps. Some of you don't need that. That's fine. And it would have been fine to have a what, um, 6 plus 5 times 1 fourth. That's fine. That's equal to 2.75. On your calculator, and I have two calculators here that have the programs on it. Do I have more than that? I don't know. So if anybody wants to borrow one of my calculators, doesn't have the programs? I have a Riemann sum program for your Inspire. Yes. But you can check your answers. On the exam, you have to show all the work, except for finding a derivative, if it's in the calculator part, um, an integral, definite integral, which we're going to move into soon, and um, finding intersection points at zeros. So if they ask you for a maximum value, or if they ask you for the sum of the trapezoids, you have to show all the work. If it's in the calculator part, you could use your program to check your answer. And the program is under PGRM, and it's Riemann. You can get there by doing alpha. The alpha key and the R get you there faster. Don't do the one with one in. I think there's a problem with it. I should just get rid of it. But anyway, Riemann is the name of the program. And when you press Enter, it's going to say, what's your function? It's x squared. And then it's going to ask you for your lower bound, which we did zero, just because it was easier arithmetic-wise. And upper bound, which was two. And then I think you press enter and it graphs it, or does it ask for the number of partitions? OK. And what partitions means is how many trapezoids, how many rectangles do you want under the curve? How many trapezoids do we have? Four. Four. Partition just means to divide it up. They should ask you how many partitions. Some place it will. Then you press, then, it, then it, you press enter, and you get the graph, and then you press enter again. And then you get the choices, and we'll choose trapezoid. Did you get 2.75? And what I like is it draws the trapezoids. Can you see that it's an overestimate on your calculator? Do you have the programs? Oh, we'll get those free. Yeah, some of you got them, and it's just a big class. Okay. That's kind of a, it's a definitely cool program. 
Okay, we are changing the assignment, but what I have to do is bring up the other class. And I'm going to give you the handout, and then we'll go over the quizzes briefly. What we're going to do on the quizzes, I'll find it down here. I think that's an A. <laughs> um, on the quizzes, if you got less than a 6, a 6 is 95%. If you got less than a 6, you can do corrections for half points. You should always do corrections anyway, so you understand what you did wrong. And we'll talk about a couple things. Everybody should have turned in their homework. Still should be going around. I, I got it fixed. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, that's okay. I finally figured out how to do it. <laughs> the blue page on your homework. Five two. And since I'm collecting the blue one, I will grade one on there. Why is it late? Oh, you left it at home. Okay, this is the assignment that she has up there. That's what we're going to do on this worksheet. Feel free to do more. It's 15 minutes of problem. That's what you should be looking at. And you probably don't know how to do everything. That's the reason why we're only assigning part of it. Oh, sorry. Yes. So the, the calculator won't help you on question three. Now, the calculator on the exam now is only on questions one and two. And also, they are not going to be releasing the full exam anymore. You are not allowed to talk about the exam at all until I find out which questions will be released. And only those questions will you be allowed to discuss. Okay, problem one. Hey. I can't yell that. That's great. because we're having water. You can have water in between, but not during the exam. Oh, we should, we're supposed to. Now, C asks for, it says, what is the acceleration? How do you find acceleration? It's the derivative of the velocity. Are you going to do that by hand, or are you going to put it on your calculator? You're going to do it on your calculator, because you're only going to get one point for it. And most likely, if you do it by hand, you're going to make a mistake. So don't. Plus, it's a sine function, so you're going to have to make sure you're in radian mode. Then on two, just A, three, A and B. But we're supposed to do one A or three? Just those parts, one A and C. One, one A is not, one A is not the other. Yes. No, it's the, it's a midpoint, remind some. D is um, acceleration equal to zero, but you don't have to do that. Yeah, this is a calcul all these are calculator problems, I believe. We get our no, number four is not a calculator problem. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's three. Four A we did in class. Just because it's tricky. And then five A and C six. She forgot to talk about this, I think. I don't know, A and D. You can't really do B. You could do a trapezoidal sum. It will not give you the average number of people. It will give you part of the way to get to the average number of people. So you could do that if you want. Eventually, we're going to do all these. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And she should have put in it. Oh, and here's the textbook. Notice, just three problems out of the textbook because we feel that the AP problems are far more valuable. You can understand how to do a trapezoid, right? Better to do it in context. You don't need a lot of practice finding tra areas of trapezoids under the curve. So let's look at 4A right now. And then I'll hand back quizzes and your homework, because I should have given it back yesterday. But. So I'm just going to add a page. 4A, I have a table, and they want this. The interval is 30 to 60, and let's get this right. What is this asking you to find in terms of this car? We have a car traveling on a straight track. 
because it's, it would be displacement if we kept them with the negatives. But it's not. It's absolute value, so it's the total what? Okay, let's talk about displacements. I stand here, if I walk over here, and then I turn around and walk back, my displacement is zero. Because displacement is asking, how far are you from where you started? My distance, however, out of n, is my distance zero? My feet are going to tell me my distance is not zero. Right? So when you do this absolute value, that's going to give you your distance. So this is going to be the total distance. Okay, traveled by the car. That's not enough. You have a big table there. This is from 30 to 60. So what's it going to be from time equals from t equals 30 to t equals 60. Didn't ask for units. Please does. Using appropriate units. What are we measuring this in? But it's the total distance. So it's just feet. You can look online and see how to write it really nice and neatly. But, and all these answers are online since you now have this. Now, these are all Form B problems, which you do not have. The full exams. We can get them for you. Oh, you, don't have, you don't have any of them. We have them. But. Okay. Think of it dimensionally. Velocity is feet per second. <coughs> right? And if you multiply it by the total number of seconds, then what's going to happen? You're going to be left with just feet. So when you're, now this is happens to be a velocity problem. But if you're talking about population or anything else that they're going to talk about, votes, if you do it dimensionally, you'll see what you're going to end up with. So that would be one point. You have to have all of this. All of it. Okay, if you're just missing one little piece, the feet, or the 30 to 60, it's wrong. Don't get it. Okay, so now I want to find the total distance using a trapezoid. Do you want me to graph this? What's the, if V of T, we're going to go from 30. So here's 30. If I copied it, I wouldn't have made the mistake I did in the other class. 35, then it's 50, and then it's 60. Here's your time. Now, this was negative 14, negative 10, 0, and 10. So what's the absolute value of V of T then? Adam, what's the absolute value of that then? This is 10, this is 14, and this didn't change. And if it, it helps you to visualize this by drawing a graph, I'll draw a graph. Here's 30, I don't really care. And we'll make this 14, i will make this 10. I just want to see a picture. At 30, it's going to be up at 14. At 35, it's going to be at 10. At 50, it's going to be at 0. And at 60, it's going to be back up at 10. So it looks like this, if you want to connect the dots. And it says do trapezoids. There's one trapezoid. What's this next one going to be? It's going to be a triangle, which is part of a trapezoid, if you think about it. And then the last one is another triangle. So why don't you guys try that. Make sure that you get this height. This is 5. How big is this height? Not 5. That's what my mistake was. 15. Read the problem and read the problem. <laughs> and this is last one is? Oh, 10. That's as high as it gets. I mean, they're not bad. Okay. 